This is part number three in living in Jesus. Reading John 12 and 3, Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. It'd be great if we had some spikenard here this morning. I don't think I could have Afford much more than an ounce if I scrape my bank account according to what they paid back then. I don't know what it costs today. But wouldn't it be wonderful to fill this house with the same smell that Jesus enjoyed on that day? Just to glorify his name with him and just feel like we're a part of him. That's what this living in Jesus message is all about. Feeling like you're a part of Him. Living in Him. And He in you. I remember hearing a preacher preach one talk a time talking about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And he said, it's like this. You can be in the river, but the river not be in you. But it's altogether different when the river's in you and you're in the river. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. There's a lot of people that comes to church in all the churches I've ever been to. And they enjoy being in church. And nothing wrong with enjoying church. I wish we could enjoy church around here like I've enjoyed in some of the churches I've been in. I'd love to lead a choir and you hear the wonderful singing and the praises of people worshiping God, but we're doing the best we can. And you know God honors that. He doesn't say we got to have a crowd of a thousand people, which I've never been in that many people unless I was at a convention. But he said you didn't have to, didn't say you had to have the best singers, though we have pretty good singing on the internet and our people that sing here, we love it. Amen. Amen. So we can feel like we're having church with God yes. but you know what he said two or three gathered in my name there I am in the midst of them you know I want him in my midst so much that he's in my voice in my throat in my breathing in my body I just want to be a vessel meat for the master's <coughs> use Prepared unto every good work. This last segment is while the light is with you. John twelve thirty five. Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while, while is the light with you. Walk while you have the light. Lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may be the children of light. These things spake Jesus and departed, and did hide himself, hide himself from them. But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. That the saying of Isaiah, the prophet, might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report, and to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe, because that Isaiah say again, He hath blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. These things saith the Isaiah, said Isaiah when he saw his glory and spake of him. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers, among also many believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. 
For they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. Now the book of Isaiah in the sixth chapter, Isaiah says, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and his train did fill the temple. And he talks about the seraphims that had wings over their feet and wings over their eyes, and with two wings they did fly. And they went back and forth in the temple of the Lord and cried, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And Isaiah fell down and said, Lord, I'm a man of unclean lips among a people of unclean lips. And an angel took a coal of fire off the altar of God and touched his lips. And then he said, Behold, I've cleansed you. And then, then he gave this prophecy that is spoken here where he said, I'm going to send you and you're going to go and the people are not going to see nor hear nor believe. It's amazing that after he'd done so many miracles, yet because he was in his death throw, he was in the grip of death itself, and he was going to the garden. <coughs> he was fixing to face death. They'd have their last supper, and the last supper even symbolized what he was doing for them because he said, here, drink, this is my, my blood. Here, eat, this is my body which I've given for you. He was trying to show them the work that he was fixing to do in the spirit. And in the spiritual world, there's a temple just like there is in, in the Old Testament. That Moses built the temple of Jerusalem or the temple they used in the desert with that tent, the inside of that temple had the same things that were in heaven. The Ark of the Covenant and the, the lamp posts and the altar of incense, all that was in heaven too. He built it after the pattern he'd seen. But you know, even with Moses and as with Jesus, People failed to understand what God was trying to do. God was trying to get us to live in Him. He was trying to present His body, that eternal sacrifice for us, that we could live in Him. You see, the Lord is all about life. He said, I am come that I can give life and life more abundantly. He wants you to live. But he wants you to live in a way that it will be eternal. Not temporal. Not, not this just going to die and be eternally punished. And, that so you, you can die and eternally be with him. And be part of him. So we live in him. Walk while it light is with you. You know, we're in here this morning and we're shedding a little bit of light on the Word of God. But if you let this light come in your heart, His Word abide in you. He said, if my word, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done. And He said, we're the children of the day. Not the children of the night to be sober. Not to be drunken as those that are drunken in the night, but to be sober. In one scripture he said to be sober and vigilant. For your adversary the devil is as a roaring lion walking where he can walk and devour and whom he can devour. But he said greater is he that is in you that is he than in, that he is that is in the world. Amen. He came to give us light. To walk while the light is with you. Walk according to God's word. 
When you feel like the darkness is starting to close in, reach back for the Word of God. Hide it in your heart that you might not sin against God. It's what the psalmist said in the 119th Psalm. He said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And you want to live in that light. Let me read this conclusion scripture I have from 1 John 5 and 12. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. <coughs> These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. And if we know that He heareth us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of Him. How does this work? He said, asking by the will of God. Now what's that mean? That means if you don't get what you want, it must not be the will of God. And the key to being a Christian about that is not to say, well, God has an excuse not to do what you want. But we know that He wants the best for us. And sometimes our will is not the best for us. And we have confidence in that. And we know He heard us because we prayed according to His will. I've told you several times about my experience of prayer the day I fell and broke my neck and I said, Lord, I need an answer. No matter what the cost, I need the answer. And I sensed in my spirit Him saying to me, no matter what the cost, and I thought, boy, this isn't going to be cheap. This is not going to be a cheap thrill. Nobody's going to help me shout and dance all about. This is serious. But I thought of the scripture in 2 Peter 3 that says, He's not willing that any should perish, but all come to repentance. He's not willing that any should perish. If I come to His will, it doesn't matter what I get because it's His will that it's not going to be too bad. It's not going to be too bad. Even if I die, I won't die without Him. That's what He's trying to say. He's not saying people won't die. He's saying you won't perish. It means that if you go through death's door, you come out on the other side with life victorious. And that's my goal always, is to come through victorious. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son hath not life. Do you have the Son this morning? Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the glory of your word, for we know... Lord, that you came to seek and to save that which was lost. I don't want of, one of us to lose out in this building. That's why I preach like I preach. <coughs> so I don't want any blood on my hands where I failed to preach the truth. And your word is the truth. And I pray, Lord, that as we play this last song before our our grace song, Amazing Grace. This last song will take time to pray and to let you have your way in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to play one last song and then Brother Heath will sing with us Amazing Grace. This last song says, we will stand our ground.
Sorry about that. It's all right. It's all right. It was underneath my chair. Oh, okay. okay. 